afternoon. She spent the whole night telling me about it. Evidently got pretty ugly. He threatened her. You mean he threatened her? Is she all right? Oh, she's fine. I'm gonna go uh, turn off the pool heater. I'll be right in. I've been telling Jane for years. What do you expect? Always going out with married men. Oh, well, dinner with Kowalski was fascinating. He's still lying to me. I hope he stops. Told him to his face. So you keep this up, pal. You're gonna end up in a federal prison. This doesn't interest you. Of course it does. What did he say? He said... I was a brilliant attorney. First thing in the morning. So do I. I'm just so tired. I'm sorry. I do love you. What are you waiting for? Rope this place off. Lieutenant. What have we got? Maid found the body about 20 minutes ago. I checked the house, no forced entry. Where is the body? Upstairs. Victims Jane Marie Woodman, 34. Writer? Yeah. You know her? My wife reads her books. All right. Let's get down by the water. All right. Michael? There are two police officers looking in our yard. Sergeant William Harper. Sorry to bother you. What's the matter? Folks happen to know one of your neighbors, name of Woodman. Jane Woodman. Dear God, what's wrong? Sorry to tell you that she's been murdered. What? I'd say she's been dead eight or nine hours. She's killed sometime between 11 and midnight. Weapon was a heavy object of some kind, but not blunt like a piece of pipe or a tie iron. It's different. Wounds have an odd character. I'll know more after the autopsy. Oh, well, we searched the house, the yard, nothing. It sure would help to know what kind of weapon we were looking for. It's covered with blood. Lieutenant, I got some. Woman next door says she and the victim were friends. Says they had dinner together last night. 
Who is she? Name's Robeson. Victoria Robeson. Her husband used to work in the DA's office. Michael Robeson? Well, Robeson. Gervitz, right? It's been a while. Yeah, this is uh, my wife, Victoria. This is Lieutenant Gervitz. This is Robeson. I hate to put you through this, but I have to ask you some questions. Okay? Yes? May I help you? Uh, I'm a doctor. Jane Woodman is a patient of mine, a close friend. Wait here a minute. I think the lieutenant's going to want to talk to you. And what did you do when you got back here, you and Miss Woodman? We talked very briefly. We were both tired. She went up to bed. I, I came home. And what time was that? I don't know exactly. Well, I got home before she did, about 11.20. I went for a swim about 15, 20 minutes later is when you came. 11.35. Actually, 11.40 at the latest, because I looked at the clock when I came in the house from the pool. It said quarter to 12. You're sure? Yeah. Um, Mrs. Robeson. Does Woodman have any enemies, anybody who might have wanted to hurt her? Yes. Well, Mrs. Robeson, I'm going to have to ask you to come down to headquarters. We'll need a formal statement. So, uh, tell me, Doctor, in this argument with the deceased, you threatened her? I admit I was having an affair with Jane. I admit we had a quarrel yesterday afternoon. I found out she was seeing someone else. She didn't even try to deny it. I got pretty nasty. But I most certainly didn't kill her. She was alive and then some when I left her house. And what time was that? About five o'clock. I went to the hospital. You can check that. Saw a patient till about eight. I drove home to Malibu, had dinner with my wife. We watched TV, went to bed about 11. My wife will verify that. Dr. Longwell, did your wife know about your affair with Miss Woodwin? Yes. You told her? No. She hired a private investigator. That's. That's how this whole thing blew up. Anything? Nobody's telling the truth. Yeah. They pick up Longwell's wife yet? She flew to New York this morning. Bring her back. Yes, sir. The worst part of this job is that you know going in, people are going to lie to you. I didn't have dinner with Jane last night. Of course, they don't all admit it as readily as you. Lieutenant Gervitz, I have never done anything like this before. Okay. Do uh, you want to tell me where you were last night? With another man, a photographer. We went out to dinner, then back to his studio. I left at quarter after 11. What is going on here? I mean, she's been in there for over an hour. Lieutenant's a stickler for detail. Shouldn't be much longer. Uh, 
That's spelled G-A-N-N-S? Yes, his first name is Evan. On Hampton Street? Yes, it's an old warehouse. Okay, Mrs. Robeson, that'll be all for now. I most likely have some more questions for you, so please don't leave town unless I know about it. Does my husband have to know? Well, that depends. On what? And whether you're telling me the truth or not. I've just put my marriage in jeopardy. Why would I lie? Because adultery isn't a crime, Mrs. Robeson. And murder is. I'm Detective Lieutenant Alvin Gervitz. This is Detective Sergeant William Harper. Are you Evan Gans? Who? Oh. Now look, I've been in Paris for the last month working. I just got back this morning. This place has been locked up. I locked it myself when I left. I've been told he's a professional photographer like you, Mr. Fox. Early 30s, athletic build, blonde hair, green eyes. Gans. Evan Gans. You sure you don't know him? Never heard of him. Could somebody have been staying here while you were gone? No, absolutely not. I mean, I got a fortune in cameras and equipment here. Hello, sir. Oh, yes, yes. Judy, these uh, gentlemen are detectives. This is my uh, friend, Miss Judy Reinhardt. Darling, there seems to be a bit of confusion here. Um, you didn't let anybody stay here while I was gone, did you? Of course not. No. Why? What's going on? Miss Reinhardt, do you know a man named Evan Gans? No. Who should I? Yes, it's, it's ours, a Wyatt. Very expensive. When did you last see it? Sunday afternoon. I was here working, getting ready for our new show. Vicky, my partner, came in and took it. Thanks. Downtown this morning. The client burned down his own factory. Insurance. Look, look. I ran into Mark Longwell coming out of police headquarters. They released him? Because they didn't have enough evidence to offer him. Boy, I don't get it if Longwell isn't guilty. This is Robson. Mrs. Robson, sorry to intrude at a time like this, but uh, Lieutenant's orders, he wants to see you. Now? Yes, ma'am. I have asked Michael to wait outside. It's, it's better that I handle this. Handle what? what what's it's, going it's, on? Larry, Dad, Mrs. Robson. My name is Oswald, Chief Deputy Criminal Prosecutions. Is Michael here? No, I'm representing him. Case, Lieutenant, please. Victoria Robeson, I'm placing you under arrest for murder. What? You lost your mind. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say... I don't understand. Don't what are they anything? saying? What are they saying that I can't change? And will to use the against you in a court of law. You have the right to talk to a lawyer and have him present with you when you're being questioned. Mr. Oswald, you filed second degree. Why do you object to bail? Your Honor, there is certain evidence being developed that I am reluctant to divulge at this time. You're anticipating additional charges? Well, if it would please the court, I would prefer not to get into that at this time. However, I do feel strongly that the accused should be held without bail pending Your further... Honor, the defendant is married to an attorney who is a former assistant district attorney. She's a successful businesswoman. Highly regarded in the community. All right, Counselor, I'm going to grant bail in the amount of $200,000. Thank you, Your Honor. Next case.
Next case, number 862115. Come on, Tad, you don't have squat. Who's bluffing? The lady lied about her whereabouts and who she was with. There's no such person as Evan Gans. Besides, physical evidence is more than compelling. More than compelling. Don't give me that crap. Her fingerprints were all over the murder weapon. It came from her art gallery. Besides, there's more. We've established the motive. What motive? No, no, no. Patience, my boy, you'll find out in discovery. We've even got photos. I'll see you later, Larry. Photos? Of what? What motive could I have to kill my dearest friend? I couldn't have been closer to her if she were my sister. Think, Victoria. Anything that could be misconstrued. Did you and Jane ever have a falling out? We argued about things. But, but a falling out? Never. Mark Longwell killed Jane. She had no other enemies or I would have known. She wasn't killed for her money because everyone knows she left everything to charity. Mark Longwell said he was going to kill her. She told me. He was furious because she broke off the affair. Why did they let him go? His wife verified his alibi. She's lying. Larry, he has to be the one. Hey, why are you so sure? Because I know I'm innocent. Then we have got to find this man you were with. Look, it's not going to be easy. The police conducted a thorough search. There's no police record, no military service. No credit cards, driver's license. I mean, as far as they're concerned, he doesn't exist. I didn't make him up. I believe you. Thank you for that. I mean it. Everyone's been grilling me, even Michael. He thinks you had something to do with Jane's death? No, of course not. But he suspects that I'm not telling him the whole truth. After 13 years of marriage, I expect he can read my face well enough. I never was a very good liar. Are you going to tell him? I'm working on it. Look, I want you to go see this person. Private investigator. Lucky for you, Larry's your attorney. I was patting for a week of sun and sex in the Bahamas when he called. So let's get this over as quick as possible, okay? Let me start by saying I'm a retired police officer on account of a drinking problem. But I was a good cop and I'm a good PI. I quit the booze 191 days ago and, as they say, I'm a recovering alcoholic. Now it's your turn. Did you kill your friend? No. I'm going to ask you a lot of questions, and you're going to tell me everything. If I find out you lied to me about anything, anything at all, I am on my way to the Bahamas. Understand? Yes. On the face of it, you look guilty as hell. I'm not. Convince me. You had an affair. Why? Unhappy in your marriage? I love my husband. I know he loves me. Right. There are no problems between you. None at all. Well, of course we've had problems. Everyone has problems. And we have had this disagreement lately. When, Vicky? Just tell me when. I do want children just as much as you do. It's just that... The right gallery. I know, I know. And you've wanted that ever since you decided you weren't an artist yourself. I think that's great. It's just that we don't know one couple that's our age who doesn't already have children. I'm just afraid we're missing out on something really important. Michael, I'm not talking about forever. But I know a lot of working mothers, and you can't imagine how tough that first year is. Babies need their mothers so much. I just want to speed things up. I'm trying. 
But I have to see things through this recession, or six years of work goes up in smoke. Just as long as we don't go up in smoke. Well, it kept coming between us. And then one night... You met Mr. Evan Gant. No, not quite. <laughs> I mean, it's the same kind of thing. It's like standing up, going in a roller coaster, upside down, around and around. It was it's like being in a washing machine. Uh, you were having drinks with an old college friend of Michael's when... Being a chiropractor, you get paid well. You can eat, you can have a life. And you can put those out. Where do you draw the end? It was just one of those passing moments that are quickly forgotten. But two weeks ago... I want to kill that hot spot. Okay, Victoria. Uh, no, I'm done. Can I do something for you? You don't remember me? Should I? No reason. My name's Evan Gans. Mr. Gans. I saw you at the marina not too long ago. You were with someone. I recognized you when I saw the article about your gallery. I'm a photographer. I brought a few prints to show you, but maybe I should come back when you're not so busy. I have a few minutes. Oh, this 92-year-old woman I shot in Peru. Great face, isn't it? Yeah. Her claim to fame was that she outlived three husbands. <laughs> What do you think? Good, really good. I, I'd like to see more. I'm shooting along the boardwalk in Venice tomorrow. Why don't you come down for lunch? Thank you for the offer. But I don't think that's possible. I'd be honored if you would. What do you think about it? by the attraction I felt for him. It was intoxicating. Vicki, Dr. Longwell's here. He'd like to see you. Reminds me of Jane. She could have posed for it, don't you think? Give it to her for me. I'll do it today. No, Sunday. Well, it's a anniversary of sorts. A year since we started seeing each other. I'm hoping to slip away for a few hours to see Jane, but in case I get stuck. As in stuck with your wife? No. Nah. Don't go moral on me, Vic. Besides, you've been my unindicted co-conspirator for nearly a year. Doesn't mean I'm entirely comfortable. Do it for Jane's sake. Come on, be a pal. Sunday, sure. At that moment, I envied Jane terribly. I must have been feeling sorry for myself. Jane had romance, success, and I was still struggling. It felt like Michael and I were always out of sync. Hi, sweetheart. How was the opening? Oh, great. We sold almost everything. Oh, that's great. <laughs> now I want to celebrate. How about I take you out to the fanciest restaurant in town? Ooh, how about mm. a hamburger and a piece of birthday cake? 
What? Oh, no. Oh, I forgot. Oh, you sound like you don't want to go. No, I want to go to the fanciest oh, restaurant. come on, come on. It'll be great. It will. Go ahead, honey. Make a wish. Boy, Cindy, are you full of hot air? How did you do that? I'm gonna need some help on my next birthday party. <laughs> yes, yes, you are terrific. Where do you see these pictures? The cameras make me nervous. <laughs> I like that. Wait. Hungry? Starved. Let's go. <laughs> this is the best table in the house. You have to have a lot of influence to get it. After you? I'm impressed. Ah. It's been a perfect day. <laughs> You read Count Tolstoy, you like opera, you like my work, you even like hot dogs. You're perfect. You don't know me very well. I'm far from perfect. Wrong. You are perfect. You're the most perfectly beautiful woman I've ever seen. Evan, my interest in you is purely professional. You're a very talented artist. Don't read anything more into it, okay? I'm a married woman. I knew I was in trouble right then. I told myself I wouldn't see him again. But you saw him the very next day. And every day that week. Yeah, Oh, come on, I'll race you. Come then on. I need a head come start. On. Go, come on, come on, go, go, go! Here we go. What's the matter? Don't quit now. We said all the way to the jetty. Come on. I'm in love with you. No, you're not. I am. I can't help the way I feel. I didn't want to fall in love with you, but I have. Evan, don't. Please. Victoria, we can't go on pretending that we're just becoming friends. I knew I never should have done this. Done what? You haven't done anything. I can't see you again. Do you understand? No. I think from the first moment I saw him, I wanted him to kiss me. And when he did, I wanted more. I never met a woman yet who had an affair without sharing the suspense. Who'd you tell? I told Jane. You? What do you mean, me? <sighs> well, forgive me. I, I, I know you have a, a robust appetite for life. It's just that you've walked the straight and narrow for so many years. Unless you've been holding out on me. It's not funny. Think about him constantly. I mean, even when I'm with Michael, suddenly Evan pops into my head. You think it would hurt so bad if maybe you just got it over with? What, tell Michael? Are you out of your mind? Cause all that fuss without any of the fun? Huh? But there's, there's not a marriage alive that can go on forever without a little break. It's just the way nature made us. Why be hypocritical about it? What is it? 
I have never believed in this sort of thing. Oh, please, Vicky. But these days, the, the only sin would be to deliberately hurt Michael. And what Michael doesn't know won't hurt him. It'll do you good. It'll do your marriage some good, too. What if Michael finds out? He won't find out. I'm the expert. We won't let him. Jane's plan was simple. Michael got roped into having dinner with a client Sunday night. And all I had to do was tell Michael I was having dinner with Jane. Just one little lie. By Sunday morning, I was already thinking about calling it off. Hi. Have you seen my gold cufflinks? Cufflinks? Oh, I forgot to tell you, you left them on the nightstand last week. I put them in the bottom drawer. Oh, thanks. And so, my friends, no one is compelled to evil. Only our consent gives it free reign. The sin is not in being tempted, it is in yielding to the temptation. It is not true that there are no enjoyments in the ways of sin. There are many and various. But the great defect of them all is that they are transitory and unsubstantial, at war with reason and conscience. Always they leave behind a sting. Good night, Con. See you tomorrow. Don't work too late. Bye, darling. Let's go someplace. I mean, let's just get in the car and drive. Let's <laughs> drive up the coast. Have dinner at that hotel we used to go to. Oh, I'd love that. Mm. We could spend the night. We could be together. Mm. Let's just do it. Honey, we're committed. Oh, come on, Michael. We haven't done anything so crazy and irresponsible in a long time. Come on. I'll call Jane. Oh, honey, honey, I can't. This guy's paying me a fortune. Business is business. Remember? What time is it? Six thirty. <sighs> I gotta change. I'm late. What time will you be home? I don't know, about midnight. Don't wait up. Lynn, what did he say? He accused me of seeing someone else, like I was his wife. Can you imagine? He actually threatened me. If I can't have you, no one can. He said that? Oh, and worse. I told him, get out of my house and my life. Over. He actually thought that looked like me, huh? Well, it does a little. Well, he should have kept it, because he'll never see me like that again. Well, 
enough of that nonsense. Let's just forget about my little unpleasantness and get to work. Maybe we better not. What? I could just show up. I could say that I have to cancel our engagement. Why? Because of me? Don't spoil things. Now, let me see. What have I got that'll look dynamite on you? Hmm. Where's he taking you? Out to dinner at a restaurant. Then he wants me to see his studio in Venice. Hmm. Ah. Here. And try those shoes. Red. This dress is illegal in 34 states. It has more keys than a janitor. Ah, here. Car key. House key. Oh, well, you won't need the house key. Just use the garage door opener. Come in the house from the garage. I'll leave the door unlocked. Have a ball, hon. could break a man's heart in that dress. These photographs are wonderful. I'm glad you like them. This was a mistake. A mistake? Don't make me feel any worse than I do. A mistake? My seeing you, my, my being here, it was a mistake, my mistake. You're here because I invited you here. And you accepted. But now I have to go. I, I want to go. Let me go. I, I, I want to go. You weren't. You and me are all alike. You don't get it, do you? It's not what you want. It's what I want.
got in the car, it was 11.15. I looked at the dashboard clock. I wanted to get home before Michael. Okay. You drove Jane's car into her garage. You went in the house. Did you change your clothes? Yes. Did you go into her bedroom? Yes. But you didn't speak to her? She was asleep. Asleep or dead? I don't know. I didn't want to wake her. I wanted to go home. Autopsy puts the time of death between 11 and midnight. You were in Jane Woodman's house during that time. But only for a few minutes. Time enough to kill somebody. But if we can prove that you're telling the truth about your friend helping you to cheat on your husband, so to speak, that would go a long ways towards clearing you. I'm gonna find this guy, but it's not gonna be easy. I mean, he lied to you about his name, he lied about the photography studio. He was setting you up from the moment he met you. Yes, but why? To score. What more reason does this guy need? Makes him feel like a man. He'll keep doing it. Preying on foolish women. Well, I don't know about that. I mean, actually, this guy is pretty smooth. You know... Once I find him, it all has to come out. That wouldn't be the best way for your husband to find out what really happened. Well, I've been afraid. Yeah. Well, of course, I'm not married anymore, so you can't go by me. But it sounds like he loves you. You'll hurt him. He'll be angrier than you've ever seen. But maybe later, who knows? Yeah, who knows? Okay, we start with you going home. Wait for me to call you. Thanks. I mean, thank you for putting off your vacation. It's okay. Gives me time to lose a few more pounds before I slip into the old bikini. <laughs> Vicky? Vicky? Are you all right? No. Look, we got to take care of you. Now, this kind of stress, we got to stay on Michael. top of it. I lied to you. I didn't have dinner with Jane Sunday night. I wasn't with Jane. I was with Ma'am. You don't know him. He's someone I met at the gallery. You were with a man? I, I was with him. Oh. We Please don't make me spill it out. It's not an experience that I enjoyed or that I was proud of. Then why? I don't know. I guess because I thought... I don't know what I thought. I just know that I was wrong. I was... Very, very wrong, and I am so truly sorry. <laughs> I had to tell you. You had to. Oh. Oh, I get it. I get it because you were in bed with another man when Jane was murdered, and he's proof of your innocence! Tonight, you sleep alone unless you got other plans. The police can't find him. Who? Evan Gans. His name is Evan Gans. The police think I made him up. 
Larry sent me to a private investigator, a woman. She's going to look for him. I hope you find him. Are you going to a hotel? I don't know. Will you call me tomorrow? Would you please just don't ask anything of me right now. Can I just ask you one thing? Where did I go wrong? You didn't do anything. It was my fault. I love you, Michael. Oh, yeah. Yes, that's him. Oh, Timothy, you're a real artist. He's a pretty one, isn't he? You were right. The pieces are excellent. I told you. I'd like to be paid now, if that's all right. Well, it's going to take me a few more days to put the deals together. A few more days? wasn't our agreement. Well, that's a lot of money. I've never had this many pre-Columbians before. <laughs> you said cash, right? I knew you couldn't handle it. You want the pieces back. All I want is my money. I don't have time to find another fence. All right, then. Just give me a few more days. I'll give you 48 hours. Then I'll come looking for you. Boy, you got a nasty streak in you. 48 hours. Or you're gonna see just how nasty I can be. Now what? You've done your part. Now I do mine. Mr. Evan Gans, probably not his real name, likes to hunt for women in upscale pickup bars near the water. The bar where he saw Michael and me? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe two dozen others. Can you go into bars without having a problem? Nope. But in my line of work, I can't let that stop me. Hey, don't worry. The hard part for me is laying off sweets. How do I look? Terrific. <laughs> Okay. I'll call you if I get lucky. Don't you want me to go with you? No. If he sees you, he might just run. And in these heels, you never catch him. Hello? I'm up in Santa Barbara at a hotel. I just wanted you to know the number here. Got a pencil? Yes. It's 805-555-2426. Got it? Yes. If there's an emergency, call. 
What if I just want to talk? Don't. I just wanted you to know where you could reach me in case anything happens. I gotta go. Hey, man. Good to see you. Hi. Hey, that was some party, huh? Hey, yeah. don't go, man. I owe you one. It's blonde. Thanks, pal, but I find my own. No, you don't get it. <clears throat> She's looking for you over there by the bar. She's been uh, flashing a picture of you. I didn't tell her we're <laughs> friends. <laughs> we are friends, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so keep me in mind if you, uh, you know, come across anything interesting. Club soda. I understand you're looking for me. Can I buy you a drink? No, thanks. You're a police officer. No. No? I'm a private investigator. But you were a cop. Why'd you quit? Mr. Gans, if that's your name, you're a material witness in a police investigation. <laughs> Is that so? You know a woman named Victoria Robeson, you and she... You got any ID? Yeah. Scotch rocks. You don't drink on the job. Very admirable. Victoria says you two were together on Sunday night between 8 and quarter past 11. I watched the news. I know what she's been accused of. Was she with you? Maybe. But maybe it would be awkward for me to get involved. I understand. But if you don't, the subpoena will be issued, and if you don't show up... You'd have to come find me again. I found you once. I can do it again. I bet you could. Come on, let me buy you a real drink. No. Thanks. So what do you say? Gonna help her out? Maybe we can work something out. Like what? Let's go someplace where we can talk. I came in a cab. You got a car? Blood alcohol content. She was drunk. She seems so on top of it. She said she was a recovering alcoholic, like she had real pride in herself. I'll get someone else right away. I gotta call around. She was available. This is a nightmare. Mark Longwell killed Jane. I'm sure of it. There is no one else. Actually, his alibi is 100% solid. In fact, it's a little stronger than that. What do you mean? He's going to testify against you. And we'll find out what that means tomorrow in Discovery when the DA shows us what he's got. Look, Vicky, sorry. This is torture, I know. But you're not guilty. Now, that's what matters most. Does it?
Larry called me, told me what happened. We talked. I didn't want you to be alone tonight. Oh, Michael. I'm, I'm not gonna be a big help to you, I'm afraid. I mean, none of this... I know you said that you didn't mean to hurt me and... you were sorry. And I believe you. It's true. I just, I keep seeing you with this guy. What I wanted to say was, you just got to give me some time. And, and don't ask me how long or what's going to take to make this thing right, because I don't know. Oh, gosh, I've only had about four hours sleep since I left. So, uh, I'll see you in the morning. Drop the other shoe. Get motive. Michael, hey, Vicky, uh, I have to ask you to do something. Are you holding back any information from me? What in the hell are you talking about? Longwell's wife suspected he was having an affair with Jane Woodman. So she hired a private investigator. What is this? Longwell's statement. He says he confronted Jane with these photos in the investigator's report. He says Jane admitted she was seeing you, Michael. And that, Victoria, is what a jury will consider an excellent reason for you to murder her. All right, just wait a minute. I can explain this. This is not what it appears to be. I sure hope not. Look, Vicky and I... Well, we have been going through our ups and downs these last couple of months, you know? And I thought that I was losing touch with Vicky. And it, Jane dropped by one night to return something she borrowed, uh, fish knives. You weren't home. I offered her a glass of wine. We, we got to talking. And yes, I did see her again after that. We went out to dinner one time and, and lunch another. We strolled around afterwards, went into a bookstore. We were just talking. That's it. And this. I was upset. She put her arms around me. There was nothing between Jane and I but friendship. That's the truth. All right, it's going to be your word against Mark Longwell, his wife, the private investigator, these photos. Look, the DA will say you killed Jane because you found out she was seeing your husband. He's taking his evidence to the grand jury tomorrow. He'll ask for a first degree murder indictment. He'll get it. And then what? You'll be rearrested. New charges filed. Higher bail, assuming we get it. I think we're okay there. Well, it's obvious. We have to find the man that... that Vicky was with. I'm the only one who knows what he looks like. No, 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 wait. We can circulate these. Yeah. Uh, I gotta get to court. Um, I'll give you a call later. I mean, I'll, I'll see you at the house. Hang on. Yeah. Uh, one more thing. You're meeting with Randy. Here's a copy of the tape. Listen to it. If you can think of anything you left out, call me. The record of my iniquity. No, you listen to me, Novak. I want my money. Yeah, we 
Well, you better pray that he does. What time? No, I'm not waiting that long. Okay. You had an affair. Why? Unhappy in your marriage? I love my husband. And I know he loves me. Right. No problems between you. None at all. Of course we've had problems. Everyone has problems. But you saw him the very next day. We were together every day that week. He was charming, witty, even wise. And he made me feel like the most important person in the world. I think from the first moment I saw him, I wanted him to kiss me. And when he did, I wanted more. Hi. Hi. What are you listening to? My first meeting with Randy Emerson. She asked a lot of questions, recorded the whole thing. Larry asked me to listen to it, in case I had forgotten something. Did you? I don't know. Maybe. Would you listen to it? Sure. On the boardwalk, he had his camera. He took several pictures of me. I was embarrassed at first, but then... So? What happened to that roll of film? <sighs> Maybe there wasn't any film in the camera. Maybe you weren't born to play a detective. What do you want, an 8 by 10 of your lover? Damn it, Michael. And maybe the film is still in the camera. And maybe the camera is still in his studio where we had sex. Vicky. I apologize. No, you haven't done anything wrong. I'm the one who created this mess. I'm the one who cheated. Please stop. What? Vicky, you are not the first person who ever gave in like this to temptation. But I have ruined everything for us. Our marriage, our future. I can't let you go on like this. Like what? I can't let you go on believing that you're the only one. What are you saying? At that convention last year in Kansas City, there was a woman. She was an attorney. She was married. I never saw her again. Oh, wow. I'm sorry. It just happened. And I was feeling miserable because I hurt you so badly. And you let me believe that. It just hurt so damn much at first that it didn't matter. But then it did, and I, I couldn't go on behaving like you were the only one. How come all of a sudden I feel better? Because I'm letting you off the hook. You're letting me off the hook? And what about the grand jury? Your confession, which I'm not sure I entirely appreciate, isn't going to change anything. But us. Oh, Michael, we never had to talk about trust before. We just did it. Look, we better... I mean, this is going to take a lot of time. You think we can just give it a little rest? Because we better go see a man about a camera. You're Mrs. Robeson. This is my husband. Uh, Mr. Fox, I know you've already talked to the police, but uh, do you mind if we take a few minutes of your time? <sighs> yeah, all right, come in. But I've already told them. I don't know anything about all this. May I offer you some refreshment? No, thank you. We haven't much time. Mr. Fox, my wife says she was here with a man who used your studio as though it were his own. 
Yeah, so I garlic. I'm terribly sorry, but I don't know any such person. What about your cameras? Mr. Fox, this man, uh, Evan Gans, or whatever his real name might be, he had a camera. He took pictures with it. I see. Well, I use all my cameras, except for one or two very old ones, and I had most of them with me when I was away. But... No, none missing. They're all here. Don't touch that. Why? Fingerprints. Oh, come on. Just tell me. Is there something about that particular camera? No, no, it's just that, um... Well, I always like to put a camera away on its back. I don't like to rest it on the lens barrel. Do you have a pair of rubber gloves? Yeah, of course. Out of focus, badly framed. This guy didn't know what he was doing with the camera. That's proof, isn't it? Well, it proves somebody took a picture of you with that camera. You have to have it tested for fingerprints and the film canister. Mr. Fox, it's obvious someone did use your studio. Who could have let him in? Look, there's only one person, and she said she didn't. Miss Reinhardt. Yeah. My name's Michael Robeson. I know who you are. Why don't you go away? We just want to talk to you. I said go away. I don't want to talk to you. Don't let me call the police. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Call him. Ask for Lieutenant Alvin Gervitz. Tell him you want to explain why you lied about letting Evan Gans use your boyfriend's studio. And this. Does Alistair know? I'm afraid so. Great. I'm sorry to do this to you, but I have been accused of murdering my best friend. I really must find this man. Look, I don't know where he is. I mean, I'm not even sure who he is. Anything you can tell us about him, please. Well, his name isn't Evan Gans. It's probably not Eric Gaines, either. I met him at the marina. He ships out, comes in. Some kind of sailor? No, he's a merchant marine. I saw him a few times when Alistair was away. You let him use Alistair's studio? Why? No, I didn't. But I think he stole Alistair's key from my purse. Oh, you think so? Well, I caught him putting it back. He said he found it behind some seat cushion or something. I didn't believe him, but I wasn't going to press it. He's got a temper. You dated him anyway? He was, um... I'm not going to talk about this. <laughs> Alistair's going to kill me. How did he know about Alistair's studio? I loaned him one of Alistair's cameras. He had to take some pictures of some South American carvings or something. I think he was trying to sell them. I know he didn't trust the guy he was doing business with. What was the guy's name? I think his name was Novak. Wilfred Novak? I don't know, just Novak. Michael? You know, you are going to have to talk to the police about this. It's not the police I'm afraid of. It's Alistair. So who is this Wilfred Novak? He's a dealer here in L.A. I've heard of him. Objet d'art, pretty Colombian stuff, very pricey. Okay, I think it's time to call in some IOUs. Any kind of cross-reference? Yeah. A salt charge now. I idea. There's one. Think so. There's another. Plus five points off the camera. You say this guy's in the Merchant Marine? Well, maybe. Um, listen, if you get a make on these, you call me, okay? Anytime. It's very important. Really. I understand. Nice to meet you, Mrs. Robeson. Thank you for all your help. Come on. You must see an old friend of yours. And Miss Reinhardt will tell you all this herself. So if the fingerprints give us a name to go with the face, then you'll know my wife has been telling you the truth. Then who killed the Woodman woman? 
Mark Longwell. His wife is lying to give him an alibi. I just know it. Why would she lie? Nearly as we can tell, she doesn't even love him. After all his philandering? I know Alicia. She's finally got Mark right where she wants him. If he doesn't follow her around for the rest of his life, she can put him in prison, if not the gas chamber. Suspicion of selling stolen property, charges dropped and insufficient evidence. That's it? Mm -hmm. Come on, isn't that enough? The woman said Gans was trying to sell some art. It was probably stolen. It all fits. Fits what? Mrs. Robeson, you were questioned last year with regard to an art forgery. I am not the first gallery owner to be Robbery victimized. says they investigated and you were cleared, just like Wilfred Novak. So what's it prove? Well, it doesn't matter what I say or what anyone else says. You just won't believe me. Mrs. Robeson, you have motive, means, opportunity. Your prints are on the murder weapon. No offense, Counselor. The camera turns up any interesting prints. I'll call you. Well, we are going to find Evan Gans. And when we do, Lieutenant Gervitz, we'll call you. get my money strictly against the rules I'm afraid you're gonna have to suffer a serious penalty is that I don't have the money yet this isn't what it looks like to get arrested for breaking and entering. Come on. Let's go find out where Novak lives. What if we find Novak and he denies knowing Gans or Gaines or whatever his name is? I'll sweat it out of him. I am going to find this bastard Gans. I'm going to tear his head off. And I'd like to strangle your Kansas City bombshell, too, but that wouldn't help. Let's go home. I'd like to forget I ever met Evan Gans. I wish we could, but he is the key to your defense. The key to your defense. But I think he stole Oster's key from my purse. The key? Michael, we've got to go to Jane's house. What? Jane's house. I've got to get inside. Hurry, Michael. The police said there was no forced entry. Yeah, until now. When Gerbitz finds out we broke in, he's going to throw us both in jail. The house key's gone.
Kevin Gans stole the key from Judy Reinhardt's purse. And he stole Jane's house key from my purse, thinking it was my key. Of course. He must have followed me. Well, if he followed you, why? I wouldn't stay with him. He was furious with me. He must have thought that he was following me home. He thought this was my house. Police well, said that all of Jane's keys were accounted for. They didn't think any keys were missing. But what if he left it behind after he used it to get in? There. He saw the basket. He dropped the key in along with all the others. I laid the red dress over that chair. It's the first thing he saw as he came in the door. saw her face. He came to kill me, but he killed Jane instead by mistake. Don't you see? He thought it was me. If I hadn't been such a fool, Jane would still be alive. <laughs> yes, that's Evan Gans. Okay, Lieutenant, check this. Print number one, I lifted off the camera. Print number two, from the victim's house key. Same guy, Evan Allen Hunsinger. Well, he's a sailor, all right. Second mate's license revoked. Served eight years for manslaughter. Beat a fellow seaman to death. Oh, my God. Well, well, what do you know? You have my apologies, Mrs. Robson. We try hard. Sometimes we make mistakes. We're only human. I hope you won't hold this against the department. Honey. Honey. It's over. We'll get a warrant out of this character. Get your bail bond released. <laughs> Hey, yeah. what's this? should have been. You were there for me when it counted most. Good evening, kids. Cozy cottage you got here. Hope you don't mind if I use your tape deck. This little pre-recorded message is just my way of saying, welcome home. I want to commend you both on your excellent taste, particularly your lingerie, Victoria. I'm scared, Michael. No, don't go out there. Use the car. 
car phone to call the police. Just stay here. I'll be right back. Michael. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'll be back. Right here next to the phone. Nothing has been disturbed. Thank you very much. Get the Coast Guard on the phone. She was great, Dad. Women like that, it's, it's hard to keep them satisfied. Or maybe just you can't keep her satisfied. Have you located the ship yet? Yes, sir, we have. Sailed yesterday without Hunsinger aboard. Sorry, Lieutenant. Not aboard. No, sir. Seaman Evan Hunsinger failed to make it back to the ship before it left the harbor. Anything else we can do for you? No, thank you, Captain. Roger now. Where to, Lieutenant? I don't know. And I think I'll call the Robesons, let them know. They may want to take some precautions to find this guy. I don't want to make any more mistakes. Hello, dispatch. This is Lieutenant Gervitz. Could you please patch me through to this number? 555-4189. Five, 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 Sorry, Lieutenant. 555-4189 five, 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 is reported out of order. Thanks. Turn around. Dispatch, send me a backup to the Wilson house.
Ha, ha, ha. 